I mean, my son was a major impact in my life, but then again, that goes, we're gonna go back to, again, making those wrong decisions and making the same choices that my mother made and not knowing how to raise my son. I was 22 when I had him, and to some people, that was like older from the neighborhood. People were having them like 16, 17, mm -hmm. but to me, when my son turned 20, 22, I was like, yo, I had my son at 22? Like, yeah, I was grown, I was out there, but I wasn't grown. I was right. still mentally, like, not yeah. knowing what yeah. the fuck to do. Like, mentally I was, immature like, still. Yeah. yeah. But you, you don't think about it. So really, like, um, just realizing that things were not changing. Things were not going good. A lot of just, you know, things constantly happening. Mm -hmm. And you just got to realize, like, all right, so it's not everybody else. It's not what's going on, what happened in my childhood. Right now, this was going on in my life right now and the choices that I'm making. Welcome to another episode of Success After Lockdown. We're here in the building at Exodus Production Studios in Harlem, New York, as always. To my right is my boy Eric Benson, EB. Huh? In the building. Uh, today, man, we have an amazing, extraordinary uh, guest today, special. man. Special, special guest. This is actually more like a reunion episode over here of 188th and Marion Avenue. Uh, BX, BX in the building. Right. Like this, this show, this show here is definitely one that's gonna be special. Uh, you might see some tears, you might hear a lot of laughter, mm -hmm. but that's a lot of truth to what's going to go on today. I want you to all understand and listen, man. You, we are childhood friends that have a past and looking forward to a future together and moving forward and what we're doing in our lives. And with that, I want to introduce everybody, Kimberly yeah. C. Yeah. Bro. Yes. Thank you, thank you so much for the having Kimberly me. The Kimberly C. Bro. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So, welcome on the show. Thank you. Thank welcome you on the show. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. It's long been how long? Coming. It's been... I shit, I'm 48. I I'm say about 40, over 30. I'm 46. I'll be 47. Over 30 years, years, maybe? I ain't telling my Gotta don't be know over, what I, over well, 30 I left, years. I left the hood at 17, so yeah. 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 So definitely over 30 years. Yeah, for you sure. know what I mean? It's been, it's been that type of ride. So let's just let the audience know, right? They already know, but let's tell them where you're from again. Let's tell so them where you're from. Yes, 188th and Marion. Y'all better recognize. Absolutely. BX <laughs> in the building. BX, yes. Yes, absolutely. Tell us, Kim, because they all know how what we tell them about growing up. Tell us about growing up in the hood over there. What was that like for you? You know, I always talk about the difference in what's going on in our hoods and our communities now is that we don't have community. Back then, growing up, we ain't have no lights. We was able to take the extension cord from our neighbor's house and plug it in, and we'd be all right. Nice. Um, if we didn't have a meal, I was able to have one of my neighbors feed me. You understand? So mm -hmm. um, another thing, if we doing something we ain't got no business doing, I know Miss right. Carroll going to kick my behind, too, uh -huh. and I'm going to run, and I ain't going to disrespect her, and I'm going to make sure I get my... Together, you know, no can we cross on here? Like, no, you can take whatever you want. Get my shit together. You know, I'm trying to be respectful. Right. So, um, so, you, so did you grow up in a single parent home? Or dog? I did grow up in a single parent home. Um, and how there was were that? multiple men, you know. Um, growing up, I did have my biological father in my life until about 12, and then he just kind of left my, my life to live with some other woman, but um. Had my mother, and then in addition to that, had somebody else as, you know, a part, my mother's partner, and somebody else right. as my mother's partner. Right. And then, um, but when I was like 14, my mother did marry. She, um, growing up, she was also on drugs. She was part of the crack epidemic, you know, um, as many other mothers in our building, in our neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I never, it's never to disrespect her. Me and her got a great relationship right. now, and she's doing amazing. Um, but yeah, she married. Had gotten clean, so it's been a very, very long time. My father did, my stepfather, the one who 
who she was married to passed away in 2008. But um, oh, overall, right. mom is doing good, and I'm proud of her. So how was that for you? Like, um, just the experience of growing up, you know, in the Bronx mm -hmm. with the single family, you know, single mother, and just the, all the dynamics, yeah, the, the crack era, era I mean, all the it was, dynamics. It was more. difficult. It was difficult, but then again, it was easy, like I said, because we had each other, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what made all the difference. So even if I didn't own a pair of skates, or if I did own a pair of skates, I'm giving my homegirl another one, and we riding down the hill with one skate, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we yeah. make the best out of it. Like, yeah. so, um, although it was challenging, I think it was also an amazing experience to have had community which is what again i always emphasize that we don't have now so that's yeah. what go ahead so that's where i just want to just uh speak about the influences in your life you know um back then in mm -hmm. our lives so i always hear a lot of people talk about the bad influences that mm -hmm. we had mm -hmm. you know um could you identify or remember any of the positive influences that were running around in the community as well as bad influences um, growing up. You know, I don't know what's good and what's bad, you know. It's like what what's good for someone may be bad for somebody else, you know. My, That's true too. And I said just because my mother was a crackhead doesn't mean that she wasn't a good person either. So um, I think, again, the good that I got out of it is being able to go to Yvette, shout out to Yvette, and her taking care of me when my mother couldn't. Big um, shout out to you, Beth. <laughs> you know, we see um, you. and the whole her whole family. Um, I really can't say the positive that was in my life were teachers, and that's why I'm a teacher today. Like mm -hmm. that's who congratulations on that too. Uh, yeah, for real. Yeah. Like I know, growing up for us in the neighborhood, like going to school wasn't really something that <laughs> I would say 99.9% .9 of true. us actually did. Uh, Boy, we did go to school. We really didn't pay no attention. I know I didn't. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, how, how was you able to maneuver and stay focused through school with all that going on? Like, all the I didn't like being home. Mm. So, I, I kind of, it was like off and on for me. Elementary school was amazing. I was in PS85. Of course. PS performing 85. arts class yeah, from right. like four, fifth, and six. <laughs> yeah. So, I was in a performing arts class, and that kept me going because I love performing. I love doing arts. And those two teachers, Ms. Kopsey and Ms. Kravitz, mm -hmm. held me down. When my mother couldn't buy me a uniform to perform, they took care of me. You right. know what I mean? So, Absolutely. again, that's where the teachers came into my life. Junior high school was different. That was a whole different animal. <laughs> my first year, you ain't never yeah. seen me in school. I was like, what? I can go outside somewhere? Like, yeah. So I was out. Um, where well, you went? Everywhere. No, I went to 118. Okay. I thought, oh, you, you went to 118? I got kicked out of 187. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur Avenue, 118. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to avoid going to like the local, like Roosevelt. I never went there. I went to Julia Richmond. Then I got kicked out of Richmond. But then I went to Bronx Regional. Mm. So that was a smaller school, alternative high school. They um, they were like our parents. I actually was just a Absolutely. keynote speaker last week at oh. um, the high school. Yeah, that congratulations on that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. For real. We're that definitely going to get into that. Yeah. So um, PS85, you remember Mr. Good? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. 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 Good, thank you with the ruler. <laughs> Listen, that's what happened to you in right. second grade when you yeah. first came. You, you remember? tried to look under my skirt. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, she remembered that. Oh, you know? swear. Because you, you had just came, like you didn't come like in the beginning. Yeah, came, I came, like, I came late. Something. I got yeah. kicked out of PS 85 in the fifth grade. Okay. Then they sent me to 137. Okay. Never graduated, went to jail from there. Okay. When I came home from jail, they sent me to Walton High School. Every school that I went to, they started a special class. I don't know if you remember, but they started a special class in PS 85 mm. between me, Ewok, and Leroy, Mr. Solo, they put Mr. Solo uh -huh. to be our teacher behind the auditorium upstairs. There was a little the room little rooms. where they had the <laughs> chairs and everything yep. because we were so bad. They had me, Alan um, from 188 from Valentine, Ewok, and Leroy from mm -hmm. the block. Literally had to go into that school in the back of the auditorium and sit in that class from 8.30 in the morning to 3.30 wow. with no air, no window. It was like, yeah, I got to go to the bathroom. You all yeah. go together at the same time with me as an escort. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It was prison for me. Yeah, I was just going to say, that's it was, pretty it much was, the same type of environment. And I wonder yeah. why I always adapted to prison. Yeah. Damn. Anyway. No, it's a serious thing. It really was. Yeah. 
And so if you could uh, elaborate a little more about why you kept that, that, that guidance in yourself and that focus of, you know, becoming a teacher, you know what I mean? Oh, well, I'm not like a regular teacher. Yeah. You know, I'm a different kind of teacher. I'm, a, a, teacher. I'm a poet teacher. I'm a poetry teacher. Yeah, and, um, but I also yeah. include, like, conflict resolution. I include emotions. I include in dealing with what's going on in our lives. So it's not just, like... I'm here saying A, B, C, one, two, three. No, but I think you right. even more of a yeah. regular teacher I'm, than a regular mm-hmm. teacher. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right, what you, right, exactly. what you bring to the table. Yeah. I, mean, you know? it, I think it's amazing how, you know, from a lot of people growing up in the neighborhood, you know, everybody's life went separate ways. And mm-hmm. I would like to consider, you know, I would consider the block as a, as a lost hope for some of the kids growing up. Absolutely. A lot of us are still stuck there. Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, haven't grown mentally, right. right? In age yet, but mentally they're still stuck in that same mentality. Mm-hmm. And it's just amazing when you see, you know, me, you see Eric, you see Arthur, you see yourself and a couple of other people who have went through the adversities of life and the trauma and the pain and all that stuff and the obstacles mm-hmm. and to still come up on this side, right? right? Because it swallows a lot of people. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, lot. and you know, to to be here today, to be sitting down and doing something positive with the community, to give back, to have saying, you know, I've been through this, but still overcoming and still mm-hmm. pushing forward, not le- using it as an excuse, excuse right. mm-hmm. to continue to be bad and negative mm-hmm. and be destroyed and destructive mm-hmm. to your community. Indeed. All right, and I think that's just that's just amazing. Mm-hmm. Um. And, and with that being said, you know, tell me your last 30 years, like what, besides the oh school, like I know you've been through some stuff. Yes. Let's talk sure. about, let's talk about that because I know you overcame a lot of mm-hmm, stuff, mm-hmm. right? Um, let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's, so, um, you know, growing up, my mom was in an abusive relationship, um, one like real serious, where we had to leave Marion for a little while, go to shelters here and there, and um so in return, you never kind of want to grow up to be your parents, right? But you end Absolutely. up being in the same situation. Because sometimes that's really what you know. Like, that's right. when we talked about product of our environment. Right. And um, so I've been through abusive relationships. Um, you know, I had cocaine issues, too. I had my run with cocaine. And um, those are, like, the real major things. And just not knowing how to love yourself mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a major one absolutely you know and learning how to unlearn things that we are taught mm-hmm. um yeah so 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 the on that stage in your life with the you know the drug use and just uh cons- being consumed to your environment mm-hmm. like um was there a time where Incarceration. Oh came yes, in yes, yes. That too. I was incarcerated. And, absolutely. And but what I was, was only, that? What was goodness, that about? I was only there for five days. Yeah. I got on. I was in Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, I and was listen, in Atlanta federal prison. And it's so crazy because as much dirt as you, I've done, like yeah. I go to Atlanta and I'm like, oh man, I get locked up here. Yeah. And so I got out on first offenders, but I did have. Um, that was definitely a major um thing in my life, and I did um end up getting a felony. So um which is crazy because you couldn't get no jobs. You couldn't, like, it was absolutely insane. It was just, yeah, yeah having that on your back is definitely challenging, but you just got to keep so, pushing forward. So, so again, like, <laughs> and thinking about that, mm-hmm. because I always look at in life now from, you know, just from my upbringing and me being that troubled youth and going through the transition and taking that self introspection of myself. Mm. So it was unfortunate for me that it took 25 years to life mm-hmm. with, the, with the judge hitting that gravel and, and giving me that sentence. Mm-hmm. However, that's my blessing as well. Right. Because that was the time that I told myself that you, you need to do better with mm-hmm. yourself. So I wanna ask you, like, um, do you remember that time in your life, that pivotal moment where your growth and development begin to, I guess, being picturized or mm-hmm. picturized with yourself 
and and knowing that because we all I think we all have that moment where we like yo enough is enough I need yeah. to start doing right absolutely it wasn't even after I got on probation because I mean yeah. um because after that I still was like drinking crazy like I couldn't smoke so I was like <laughs> so no I was like oh I'm at this bottom I, was, yeah. so I started drinking more um mm -hmm. making wrong decisions you know having i have a son too he's 24 years old um shout out to him yeah what's his name man? It, it, he's d, d. <laughs> he's, a, he's a d, rapper right? he's a really um well-known bronx rapper but um okay. d, yeah that's my okay. son and uh he don't like me saying his real name he's just <laughs> so he's special a really good special yeah. Um, yeah we have a great bond so yeah. Um, I mean, my son was a major impact in my life, but then again, that goes, we're going to go back to, again, making those wrong decisions and making the same choices that my mother made and not knowing how to raise my son. I was 22 when I had him, and to some people, that was, like, older from the neighborhood. People having them, like, 16, 17, mm -hmm. but to me, when my son <laughs> turned 22, I was like, yo, I had my son at 22? Like, yeah, I was grown, I was out there, but I wasn't grown. I was right. still mentally, like, not yeah. knowing what yeah. the fuck to do. Like, mentally I was, immature like, still. Yeah. yeah. But you, you don't think about it. So really, like, um, just realizing that things were not changing. Things were not going good. A lot of just, you know, things constantly happening. Mm -hmm. And you just got to realize, like, all right, so it's not everybody else. It's not what's going on, what happened in my childhood. Right now, this what's going on in my life right now and the choices that I'm making, you know? Yeah, cool. um, all about the energy that you keep, the people that you keep in your circle, the places that you go, and the things that you do. And those are the times where you be like, okay, I'm homeless again. Like, what the heck? Like, ah, uh, you know, so. Right. Yeah, and, I, and I think that at, at a given point in anybody's life, right, growing up where we grew up at and how we grew up, you know, we deal with, mental illness, health trauma, mm -hmm. and a lot of stuff like that. Um, I just want to say, I got over 10 years clean, okay. no drugs, no alcohol, no uh, nothing in my system. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I haven't sure. smoked a cigarette since November 21st, 2019. Oh, man. Um, yeah, it's been four years for me. Yeah, and, and, and I say that because I know 23 we... 23 for me. Yeah. And it's a blessing because these are some... Thing that was coping skills yeah. for me, right? Growing up, it, it was sex, drugs, rock and roll, mm -hmm. and all that other BS. Mm -hmm. um, trying to self cope with a lot of things. Uh, and I know we dealt with a lot of trauma. And I tell a lot of people like they don't understand like my life when I was growing up and some of the choices that I made. Right. And I, I say it looked like we was put together in neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? It looked like when we talked about perception and how you looked at it, right? Mm -hmm. Even though we was poor and even though we was and from the inside out, outdoors, things was fucked up and bad. Right. But we still made the best of it. We still had neighbors Once that still try to look out for exactly. you, you know, and, 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 and some little guidance, right? Mm -hmm. Whether we took it, whether we accepted it, whether we applied it, it's another thing. Mm -hmm. But we had that sense of community, right? Not like today. How did you deal with a lot of trauma um, in your life? How did you deal with, like, that's a lot. Right. Yeah. Like. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, we're talking about being um, sexually abused, you know, then as a child and not being able to tell anybody, you know, everybody's like, you don't say nothing. You get whatever happens in this house, you yeah. keep it yeah. in this house. Um, I even said that in my speeches, like, you know, I was told to quite often to shut, shut yeah, up, shut up, don't mm -hmm. say nothing mm -hmm. or they ask you a question and then they tell you to shut up immediately. Yeah. You're like, what the heck? So, yeah, you, know, like, you feel like you never have a voice. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing what I teach these kids right. like, y'all have a voice. That's right. Don't let nobody tell you you ain't got a voice because mm -hmm. you got a voice. And, um, it, it was, it was rough, you know, but you get through it. You have, you have you have choices, right? But if you want to succeed and you want to grow, you ain't got a choice in, in making changes in your life. So, no. did I miss the question? I feel like I started rambling. No, no, no you didn't <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah just a, a, lot of, a lot of things that go on in your life and you have to figure out which route you want to go. That's know? right, that was very well put. You know, um, just, just keeping on the, the, you know, I think there's different levels of trauma you know, in, in our lives, mm -hmm. you know, um, some that some a lot of us don't even identify. Mm -hmm. You know, when the, with those stages, those different stages, those different occurrences mm -hmm. that that come about. You know what I mean? So how do 
How you worked on that, like poetry, in your life? Poetry helped me. That's what we want yeah. to talk about. Poetry helped me yeah. um, a lot, and that's how, in return, I realized that that was my calling and my purpose. Because not just for myself, but I was helping other people. So it wasn't it. It, it didn't even. It wasn't even about me anymore at one point. Yeah. Like okay, now I can help other people while still healing and Absolutely. helping myself. Yeah. Absolutely, because I would dare to say that it really was about you. Because mm -hmm. if you helping somebody else that that's helping mm -hmm. yourself, then because you you know like I know we can't help somebody else oh, until we, we fill our cup. So we definitely help ourselves. Absolutely. So that's appreciated. Yeah. So so what was that that first night like when you did get arrested? You know when you did Man. get into custody. What was that like for you? What was the thoughts going on in your mind? Like so, I had drugs in the house. And I wasn't even there, I was at work, but somebody had snitched again. I lived in Georgia, so it was different, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And um, my son was in school, and thank goodness I had some really good people near me. And uh, they said, yeah, you gotta turn yourself in. I was like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you gotta turn yourself in? I had to turn myself in. Oh, that's in. gotta be the worst. Right. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, that's so, crazy coming to get you from somewhere yeah, else. To, yeah, you know. no, but it's even worse when you have to turn yourself <laughs> right, in. Right. And I, I had to turn myself in. It's like I'm actually gonna be a man and turn myself. Come catch me. <laughs> <laughs> I right, said so it's a little different, uh, right? Yeah. So, so I did, and um, all I can remember is getting, you know, the blanket and. The pillow, right? Yeah, your bedroll. Yeah. Your bedroll. <laughs> <laughs> your bedroll. Exactly. <laughs> and then looking at all these bump beds up there, and I'm like, oh my God, what the, what did I do? What did I do? It's Where's like, my kitchen? <laughs> no, no, forget the kitchen. Everything that I thought about was my son. Yeah. That's it. Me and my son have a, a very great relationship. He's my only child, you know, and. Mm. We ride or die. Like, even for me, he was little. Like, he always yeah. held me down. Nice. Um, and that's that's the only thing that was I didn't care about my job I didn't care about my home all that stuff I can always get something else you know um, but my son so when that happened they told him that I was like on a work trip or whatever whatever but I actually like I said got out in five days on first offenders out there because they realized I didn't have no priors and my son I had a son so they let me out. I was playing spades. I'll never forget. They said my name. I was like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you started to settle in, huh? Listen, playing man, spades and all that. I my eyebrows done. You want coffee? Yes. To do my eyebrows. Look. Yeah. <laughs> I remember these girls were like, that's my seat. I was like, y'all can have this. I'm not claiming nothing in here. You yeah. want this? Your name is on here. By all means, I'm going to get yeah. up. I'm not claiming nothing in here. I'm getting out of here. So <laughs> let, me, let me bring this back. Mm -hmm. For another second, cause I know you said when you were in PS eighty five, things was was going great. You was focused on the school, performing art and stuff like that. And then it went to junior high school. You went to one eighteen, mm -hmm. and that first year was just like, I'm out. Yeah. Like so, what? <laughs> when, when did you lose that innocence? When did you lose that 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 desire to continue staying on that school spirit? Right. Mm -hmm. So you're going to a new school. Was it like? You felt like you was just at that age where you was like, you know what? I don't have to come to school. Nobody's really watching me. No guidance. Right. I just don't want to go to school. Grown now. Right. right. Yeah. Like, you know, but grown, you know, we're talking about moving to the sixth, seventh grade, right? right. Yeah. yeah. That boy. Yeah. Right. Like, what, what went through your brain at that moment? Um, like, you know, you know what? we was already out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We was like, we was outside. That, that's why I say yeah. I can't understand this term that they use. We outside, we outside. Y'all have no idea what being outside mm -hmm. actually is. Nice. Right. You know, like right. we was right. outside right. <laughs> at a young right. age. Yeah. We ain't have no phones. We ain't have no, no, just know when the lights come on, you better be back. You yeah. know, hopefully we make it back in time. Right. And if you, was from our, <laughs> if you was from our neighborhood, yeah. somebody would shoot out the lights and they won't come on. <laughs> But well, yeah. the light didn't come on. <laughs> oh, but that you, but you, look, I was, I was you didn't look up the block to see if those lights was on. <laughs> yeah, that that's part. What you, 
I spent many, many <laughs> days when when the lights go out and you're supposed to be in the house, and now I'm I'm walking around the whole damn neighborhood because I ain't you done going, messed up. I done messed up because I ain't home. make it yeah. back yeah. in the time. And you make it worse. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> make it a lot worse. Yeah. Climbing up that fire skate. Oh. <laughs> Four in the morning trying to get in. That part. <laughs> <laughs> So, so um, going into junior high school, you, you had this freedom, this independence, you know, and um, more in, in the school system, you know, because uh-huh. in school, you're in yeah, there, you're yeah. in class. I'm in the same class all day. Now I get the mo- move class, here. yeah. But then I didn't have those teachers that I felt that cared uh-huh. anyway, you uh-huh. know. It's like, yeah, who are you? Okay, do uh-huh. this work. This is what we're going to do. Like, you know, it wasn't no sense of love or family, and that's what... That's the difference from um, Pat right. and PS85 versus going into 118. Then right. I started smoking weed, I mean, and um, just exploring, mm-hmm. exploring life, life this no. thing that we call life, yeah, right? streets. That, <laughs> um, you know, and then, um, again, being in the environments that you is, you being sexually molested as a young girl, you know, um, not really having no sense of security at home, you end up being and looking for love in all the wrong places, you mm-hmm. know. So um, that was definitely a transition for me. So I lost my virginity very young. I was like thirteen. That's years another old. episode. Too. Yeah, yeah, thirteen <laughs> like, years old, and then you know, no. doing dumb stuff, and then so yeah. so uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was just thinking like. Because, you know, you, you, we talked about these different dynamics mm-hmm. of us. And I think we all actually go through this journey that I call, you mm-hmm. know, to a degree of, um, and we all could actually talk about these things that happened and occurred in our lives. Through all of that, when you talk to me right now, when I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you know, a lot of trauma that mm-hmm. went on, right, mm-hmm. um, in growing up. And that's, I think that's just a way of life, you mm-hmm. know. Um, in anyone's life, I don't care how they turn out in right. life. You know, I think that all of us in the universe have, you know, similarities in, mm-hmm. in terms of that part, right. going through some type of trauma in our lives, right? Um, and saying that, you still manage to do so much. And mm-hmm. so I would like to hear about, you know, just... A little bit about Kim and okay. because I've seen a lot now I haven't I've been away for a long time so when I'm now that I'm here and I'm looking on social media and I see a lot that you've done in your life mm-hmm. to overcome those obstacles and those challenges that one person would have just laid their hands down they would have dropped their hands and mm-hmm. fell into the abyss of you know of sure. just homelessness and mental health and shelter and Mm -hmm. but you seem to rise every time Mm -hmm. and that's what that's what i love about you you know what what you're doing so could you i just want you to just talk about you know things that you've been doing in Uh, your life man yeah so i started my my, it started off with poetry like i said and shout out to marvi in newburgh (laughs) shout out to marvi no Uh, question he actually um I lived out there. I had moved up there when I got pregnant with my son. And um, he had invited me to his event to do a poetry piece. And I was like, all right. So my first poem was called Thankful for the Pain, where it talks about, um, talks about me being in an abusive relationship. It talks about me having an abortion at five months. It talks about um, just getting through, getting through it. You know, like I said, it's called Thankful for the Pain. So that in itself, just to be able to go on stage in front of a bunch of strangers that you don't know, talk about the things that you went through and not worry about what anybody is going to say if they judge you or whatever, because this is your healing process, you know, Mm -hmm. and this is what needs to be said for yourself, for your growth, so that you could be a better person, you know? Absolutely. I'm looking at you. You're making me emotional. I'm questioning. (laughs) um, just me sitting here is a process of me growing that's know? right all of us if anybody that's understands right. but this is like mm-hmm. me sitting here with you two and um anthony 
is the next step in my growth. And that's why I'm getting emotional. It's not because of what I've been through. That shit is old. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so me being able to do that. And then in return, you get women saying, yo, you speak in my words. I just didn't know how to say it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And in return, the fella saying, yo, where he at? <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, somebody want to protect me? Because I'm not used to that. And this is what we talked about earlier. Me and Anthony had a side conversation. Right. Um, something that needed to happen. And whoever no in this world knows, knows whatever the situation is. But um, <clears throat> we talked about a sense of security for us women and that. Many a times we feel like we don't have that. Yeah. And the poetry made me feel that. No, sorry. No question. Because so. I see it did a lot <laughs> for you. I see it. No, I mean, exactly. like, even despite it all, you still mm -hmm. seem to get it out. You mm -hmm. still seem to, know what I mean? Yeah. So anything that I write about, Crystal. whether it's um, about pain, it's about trouble, it's always going to have a positive ending. Anything. And that's what I teach the kids, too. So, like, regardless. Or whatever you're gonna go through, you gotta be able to get, learn how to get out on top. That's yeah. it. So um, through that, you know, I took a break from poetry, but then um, I ended up moving to Georgia. Like that, that's when the felony happened. I was doing um, a bunch of other things like uh, radio shows and um, hosting events, and then ended up coming back up top, and then getting back into my poetry. So um, there was a time where I lived in Connecticut before I moved back to New York. I lived out there for two years, and I was out here running back and forth to New York. My poetry was shows and shows and shows, and everything was going good. And I got fired from my job, and I sold 35 cars in my department. I was like, how you going to fire me? Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> I sold more than the two other people that worked there combined, but yeah. I figured it's politics. I already right. know what it is. Yeah. But that was just what needed to happen. So when I got fired, I decided not to go back and work for anybody. Um, during that process, I had decided to come back to New York. My son was in his last year of high school, and I left him in Connecticut so that he could finish. Um, I didn't want to take him out. Again, we moved from Georgia to Connecticut to New York, and he's mm -hmm. like, hold up, what? You ain't getting another job? Like, you know, I'm a hustler. I'm going to get a job. Yeah. I'm going to sell some CDs. I'm going to sell whatever I got, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, wait a minute, hold up. I was like, nah, so I had to explain it to him. And of course, he didn't understand it until he seen me put the work in, you know? Right. And that's why he is where he is at today with his music career, because he's put in the same work. So, um, yeah, so that was, that was challenging. I was homeless during that two years. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was the best moment of my life. It, it made me who I am. Like, my career is amazing. And even with having my felony, um, I couldn't get into the Board of Ed, you know, trying to get other school projects and things yeah. with my poetry. But um, I'm still in the schools. <laughs> I'm still you I'm still right. in the schools. That's right. Yes. Absolutely. That's right. I am. Um, and I'm teaching the kids who are like us. So I'm in the alternative high schools. I'm also in a, um, with a college that helped women who were recently incarcerated. Um, one of my, one of the ladies who is head workers who gives me my contracts is also um, a PS85 graduate. I'm not gonna say her name, but she was also incarcerated for murder. Oh. Yeah. yeah, but that's my sister. So how could, um, no, I wanna go off topic, but it's all about moving forward and forgiving and, and loving and learning, you I'm know, sorry. Sorry. and making these next steps to, to the healing process and whatever it is. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, 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 uh, I want to hear about podcasting. Oh, man. With I'm, Kim. Old, I'm old school, boo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Doing that in like 2009, 2010. Yeah. Everywhere. you just, just fulfilling your purpose. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, what I like to call it. I work for magazines. I also was a partner at a TV network where I exec, you know, produced my own shows and other people's shows. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. I throw over there, all right? Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, going to work on something. Yeah, you know, like, like, look. The pandemic happened and all not, that. Not all, not all bad <laughs> came out of 188, right? right? <laughs> I mean, our pain. You talk about that. Uh, our <laughs> pain, <laughs> our adversities, and what we went through, you know, some of us took that and, and turned it around to benefit. Mm -hmm. And... <sighs> Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, take your time. But I do, but you know, I do want to say like, like, just like this moment for me is like really personal and emotional as well. Just having you here with us, like it's just been a blessing for me, right? Because I lived a moment that I didn't think I would live this moment. So I never thought I was going to live 25 years in prison. You know, I wound up living 27 years and six months in prison. Um, and, you know, um, that allowed me to, to prepare for life, life's journey now out here. That allowed me to prepare for this universe that I call the universe, you know what I mean? And, and I, when I look at it, I just look at, you know, I look at all things tied together, you know, whether whether we go, you go this way in life and and go this way and I go this way, you know, at some point there's a connector right. and, and, we, and we connect right back again. So mm -hmm. this moment for me is like, it's overwhelming mm -hmm. because like, I know who I was. I never, I never got the opportunity to, for my mother, my grandmother. We talked about this, uh, you know, the other day, yesterday, you know, this brother brought up on um, that we interviewed about grandmothers, you know, mm -hmm. not getting enough attention. A lot of our grandmothers was there. Mm -hmm. My grandmother was there for me mm -hmm. when my mother was out in the street doing drugs. You know, and I never got that moment to show them my transition mm -hmm. in life. So that's, you know, I know they lived through me, you know, and so I take those opportunities now to just, you know, celebrating my past and, and seeing the Kims, you know what I mean? And whoever it is, because I don't, even, you know, with those people that stuck in time, I don't, you know, I don't have a bad bone in my body to say about them, you know, or anything like that. Because I think this is just how the universe works. Right. It's, it's what it is. Some people, everybody ain't going to make it. Some people are. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to be successful. Some people not. You know, um, it's what you choose. It's those decisions right. that we make at the end of the right. day. You know, and um, I know that I made, and I told, me and you talked mm -hmm. before we actually came to this mm -hmm. moment. You know, and I made those those decisions in life that, you know, I will forever regret. However, I think that those decisions that I made also, you know, um, is a part of of who I am today. You know, the fabric that I I've become. Absolutely. You know, and uh, and just knowing that today, you know, I can say that, you know, that you are never hear a B word out of my mouth. I don't care who used the word for females as bitches. Part of my language. That's the only time you'll hear it. Mm -hmm. It's when I'm, you know, I'm giving an example of it. But mm -hmm. I don't use those words no more. The word in. Some people still use it around me. And that's all good. That's, they, that's their perspective. But me, that's two of the things that I chose to wake up to right. when I went through this transition within myself after getting. 25 years mm -hmm. to life mm -hmm. was one thing you're going to take out of that vocabulary mm -hmm. of yours is that B word and that N word. Mm -hmm. And I did it. Never to use it again. And I still continue to do it. You'll never hear me use that in my sentences, in my conversation, anything, unless it's an example. So so just in saying that, I just, um, you know, I think that um, this moment right here that we have is like real special for me because... Um, I think that uh, we we really share this, you know. The greatness of 188. You know, this <laughs> moment of, of just having that past mm -hmm. and being able to be here and live to tell that past Indeed. and being able to talk, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Share our moments yeah. together and where we going, right. you know. And so, and I look forward to us staying together. Mm -hmm. now, you know what I mean? So I appreciate it. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm back. Um, 
I, I just want to say that I'm sorry for a lot of trouble that I caused in your life and other people's lives. I know what I've done, and I'm truly sorry. The apology has been accepted already. Um, the apology was already accepted in me coming here, so. You know, I think that we went through what we had to go through mm -hmm. to be right where we need to be at right now today. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at and I'm listening to your story and I'm watching you and I'm looking through all your stuff and <clears throat> looking at the books that you wrote. And it's like, I'll pass through all that stuff. You know, we still was reaching the same road again. You know, I wrote a book, probably not as good as yours, right? But I'm, I'm here stuck on your memory <laughs> lane. I'm here stuck on your memory lane book and I'm, I'm just reading a little synopsis on it. Mm -hmm. and the idea and the concept, and I'm about to actually order uh, a, a couple here because I think a lot of my residents can use it in the home. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that how you tell a poem and have the blank page right. that they right. can write, and I think I can definitely utilize that. But I want to say thank you. Thank you for showing up. Because I really didn't know how much pain that I was holding on to by my mistakes and bad choices in life until you walked into this room, you know? Yeah, and I'm just fun. so glad to see you. Absolutely. And that you're doing amazing and that you you found your voice and you're reaching out to a forgotten demograph that's out there because no one ever wants to address these issues. Right. No one ever wants to talk about mental health. No mm -hmm. one ever wants to talk about trauma. Nobody ever wants to talk about the stuff that went on behind closed doors, right? We're kind of taught to shut up, mm -hmm. move forward, bury it, and go on. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why we passed it on as a generational curse, and it just continues. And I thank you for your empowerment for breaking that chamber and passing it on to let you know women and men know that it's okay, mm -hmm. that you is the healing process. And I know I remember when somebody told me that forgiveness is not for the other person. Mm -hmm. It's for yourself. It's for mm -hmm. your own soul. Yeah, I and literally I, just said that before yeah. I came here. I did a video and I said no that person. exact thing that um, is, is not for the other person. However, yeah. if the other person is reciprocating the energy, you know what I'm saying? Then yeah, right. then it's a great thing for the right. both of you. But at the end of the day, it's really for yourself and for your growth. Yeah. So, so every only thing that's running through my, my <laughs> mind right now is still our rise, right? I don't want to take this, but Tony Tony Morrison, right? Um, I believe that she wrote a book. I don't know if anybody is familiar with Tony I Morrison, am that, but and it's still our rise. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to take those words like they mine, but I remember that you know that like I'm embedded with that that. That those words right now because I see that even through you know all the adversity and all the trauma and everything that we all went through individually, we still rose mm -hmm. for the occasion. Know what I'm saying? Indeed. And we we showing up like she showed up today for us, and we showing out. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> by by yes. staying together and, and doing the greater things in the future thank together you. too. Well, Anthony, I also want to say thank you for your apology. Um, it's definitely mm -hmm. heartfelt. Um, congratulations on your growth and your sobriety and everything that you're doing to put out in the community as well. And it's just all about moving forward from this point, you know? Thank you. Thank you. That I needed to hear that, you know, because I'm not the same person. I'm truly not. I know. We, um, there's Thank a lot you. of times growing up, it's, it's hard. We, look what we went through. We had yeah. parents who were messed up. The community was messed up. It was drugs all over, you know what I'm saying? Poverty. 
um, these demons that are attacking us because that's what it is. We're being attacked by demons, right. you know. Um, we don't know it. We think that that's just you know something that that's that's the good that's the good life. That's how we supposed to be, you know. Um, and our decisions are premature, and immature. Yeah, yeah. Those we, times, so. we we don't know. We don't know better, so. you know. And drugs, you know that. There's just so many factors that happen growing up in, in our lives. That so, so what Kim has going on in the future? Ah. What beholds? Yeah. So, well, you know, like again, I'm, I'm teaching in the schools, which is such a, an amazing, amazing um, accomplishment. Because during this transition, when I told my son why I was doing what I was doing, I said, I don't just want to be on stage. Like, that's not my goal. Like, yeah, I'm going to be right. on stages. Don't worry. But my goal is to have my workshops in schools. And that's what I did. My mm. first school that I got into was teenage girls who were incarcerated. Mm. I was in, in, nice. a, in a group. Yeah, they were like in a group home and also in the system. So that was my first one. Um, continuing to you know do books for children's, for adults. Um, I ha now I just published a, a children's book called the Good Look Kids, because I'm known as yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm known as that. I'm known as Kim Good Look Seabrook. That's Absolutely. my yeah, that's my that's stage right. name. So, but now it's it's a brand. It's not even you know. So Absolutely. my company is the Good Looking Books. Yeah. Tell me about <laughs> tell me about those characters. Good looking. By the way, I just ordered more than just I just ordered ten books for uh, oh, thank Memory you. Lane. Thank you. But tell me about your character. Okay. On that so one, please. I also work with those on the spectrum, those who are autistic. Uh, autism. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that made me come up with this book. So the book is called The Good Look Kids. Yeah, three kids who have superpowers, but they also have disabilities. <laughs> one is blind. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. is um, one is blind, but he sees through his third eye. And he can see what's going on, like if the kids are sad or, yeah. you know, whatever. And then right. um, we have Queen, who's in the wheelchair, yeah. but she also has her speed of the power from the wheelchair, her yeah. crown. And then we have Lefty. Lefty can't talk, yeah. but he speaks words and helps with good energy from his heart. Mm. So, it, um, yeah. yeah. So I they love help. That. <laughs> I love that. So I they know. help um, kids who are either being bullied and who are like having problems at home. The next book will be about problems at home. But this book is super special because it talks about a young kid by the name of CJ who was an actual kid who was getting bullied. Mm -hmm. Now, initially it was a girl named Jessie that, no, you know, just a regular character. But when I went to go speak at a school, he was in the class and I know him. Like his best, my, his aunt is my best friend. Also, we went to yeah. high school together. She's not from the block, but her, Denise knows everybody. Like, so she's like my sister. Like today we call each other. So, I said, you my nephew. He's like, I am. I was like, yeah, so I never mind him because they lived in Connecticut for a while. But anyway, nice. so um, when I spoke to his mother the evening, and I was like, look who I seen in class. And then we was taking pictures, and all the kids were like, you got somebody famous in your family. Da -da -da. But his mom told me that he was getting bullied, like it was really mm. bad, and because of his weight that he wasn't eating. So I turned the character into CJ. And now he, nice. um, yeah, Beautiful. when I had my um, book reading just the other day, I had him come and speak to the kids, and it was just awesome. So that's, that's nice. what, yeah, I, I plan to do a few more events with him and letting him speak out about bullying. Uh, and I also yeah. want to take this moment, too, to really, to really congratulate you <laughs> on that being that keynote speaker. Yeah. I know, I can yeah. feel how yeah. important that was for you and how necessary that was, yes. too. You know what yes. I mean? Because that just solidifies, you know, you as a person, a human being, mm -hmm. and, and your growth and development. Yeah. And an you entrepreneur. Know? Thank you. That's right. And mm -hmm. what's even more special is that I didn't go to my graduation because I had a black eye from the relationship I was in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, you so And I, I was and like... You still got the yeah. opportunity. And now. I was one of those students that everybody loved, you know what I mean, like my whole clique, so... It was, and the girl who came with me for the graduation is Deidre, which is CJ's aunt, because again, she was like that. So she came to the graduation, was supporting me. And, nice. Yeah, so, um, th you know, 360, yeah, yeah, uh, so thank you, thank okay. you. <laughs> that, that, that is awesome and amazing how your life went full circle and, you know, like it's just amazing listening to you and, we almost traveled down that same road. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this, but I, I do volunteer work at a juvenile facility to go talk to at-risk youth. Nice. I do a lot of stuff. I'm sitting on the board 
and Florida Core of Art of Recovery to help addicts mm -hmm. showcase their talent through music, art, and nice. stuff like that. We nice. do a big event, uh, raise money for another That's nonprofit right. organization. So it's actually refreshing that I was saying, you know, our, our, our path, you know, how we got separated mm -hmm. through the pain and the trauma and everything. Completely different, but we traveled on the same road that's on the other opposite side of the street, mm -hmm. right? right? Like, who would ever thought, right. right? Coming from where we came from, experiencing what we experienced, and with me with the drugs and alcohol and everything else like that, the in and out of prison, to be where I'm at today, mm -hmm. to giving back to the community, trying to uplift, you know, our community, you know, our recovering addicts out there and dealing with, you know, mentally ill, Ill, Ill young men and women. Right. Um, I, I tell people there's a difference between work and your purpose in life. Mm -hmm. You know, people tell me why you work so much, and I go, I don't work. Uh, right. I fulfill my purpose in life. Right. You know, um, thank you. Thank you. You know what I mean? Because regardless of what the world needs, people like us. Mm -hmm. Through our pain, through our experiences, we can talk to those people that feel that they don't have a voice and let them know that they do and that there is hope and there is help, you know, and we can overcome, you know, when we talk about it, we move forward, right? I tell Absolutely. people all the time, we don't have to allow our past to dictate our future, Indeed. right? You know, and we move forward. Um, and and I can get emotional we here. Have to have a part two. We have to have a part two as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, on success after lockdown. But, yeah. But, yeah but, anyway, uh, King, want to let everybody know how they can reach you, how they can contact you, how to get your books, yes. um, how to support everything in your movement and what you're doing. Let Absolutely. them know. So, again, Kim Goodluck Seabrook. You can find me on Facebook, Kim Seabrook. You can find me on Instagram, Goodluck Seabrook. Got the website goodlookseabrook.com or the goodlookinbooks.com. Yeah. Just Google me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's got a name. It's a brand. It's a brand. It's a right. brand. It's a right. There you go. There you go. See, look, I walk with it. There you right. go. I Catch that. It. There you go. <laughs> like, yeah. that's what 188 is breeding right here. It's not all bad. We don't all stay down. We oh, overcame. Sorry. We rise and we rose and we moving forward. Mm -hmm. You know, and for all We're those out there the that tuned in, thank you for everybody tuning in to another episode of Success After Lockdown. Understand this was a special, special, special. episode. Um, this one here, I, you know, y'all know there's a lot of emotions here. That's the third reason for those who know, knows. For those who don't, just try to read in between lines. But this is the reunion um, that was so needed. So needed. Necessary. So needed. And um, I'm, I'm blessed to be here today and to sit across from you and to have it be actually to talk. Um, and so thank you for that. Um, so. Please subscribe to our YouTube page on Success Spotify, After Lockdown, Apple Spotify, Music, Anchor, Anchor, TikTok, if, Facebook. If you guys out there know anybody that's formerly or oh, that's incarcerated or formerly incarcerated who came home, man, a woman who are doing something positive with their life and want to shed some light on them, please don't hesitate to drop us an email at successafterlockdown at, at gmail.com. Gmail okay. At risk youth, you have any at risk youth? Put gun, gun control. We got Stop the gun violence. For them. Yeah. No question. Stop the violence. Let's get back. Um, and just keep keep it positive, man. Like I always tell everybody, listen, it costs you absolutely fucking nothing to be kind, to be loving, to share a smile. It costs you more to be mean, angry, and hurtful. Amen. This world, we need some more love. So let's continue to try to spread some love and understanding as opposed to judgment and disrespect. With that, we're gone. And watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs>